Hey, what's up, guys? The number nine player in the world has been turning every Clash Royale match into a circus, frantically freezing and decimating opponents. Graveyard Freeze is one of the cheesiest strategies in the game. It has unrivaled damage potential, and the skeletons get directly on tower. So as long as you can get to Double Elixir with this deck, you'll almost always have a matchup advantage. The hardest thing to do is just being patient enough to get there. Bam Knights to cycle the evolution, but most of the time you're going to be responding to your opponent. And once you're up Elixir with a Knight, Skeleton Dragons, or Little Prince counter pushing, going for your Graveyard Freeze to finish your opponent. As long as you play passive with this deck, you'll always defend. Bomb Tower is built different to withstand all the Hogbetter Earthquake decks and destroy recruits and bait decks in the meta. And arrows obliterate firecrackers, archers, and most counters to your graveyard. It's time to hold our opponents in place with Freeze so we can move up some places on the leaderboard, dancing with our skeletons and dominating every opponent. Lots of love to everyone supporting the channel with credit code SIRTAG. So we got a game against a certified savage from the Vikings clan. So I've been watching a lot of Viking shows recently and I'm ready to transform our knight into the fiercest Viking imaginable. I don't think this is necessarily a great strategy going graveyard at the start, but looking at my hand, I didn't have any other options. Also, we can conveniently counter the ghost for a positive elixir trade if we just drop our goblins at the correct timing. Notice how the ghost gets surrounded and pounded by the stab goblins. And you know what? The knight... No! Oh, I was hoping to at least get one hit on the tower there. We are 1 million percent played against a royal giant deck. So if that's going to be the case, I am not a huge fan of doing this, but this is what we have to do. We got to go in for a knight here so that we can make sure that the fisherman does not run away from the splash damage of the bomb tower. And then we are A-OK -okay on defense. Is it going to be a lot of damage? Yeah, you guys already knew that, but <laughs> it is what it is. Royal Giant right off the start is scary because if I went in for a little prince, it might get yoinked by the fisherman and then I wouldn't be able to click the ability down in time and then it would be horrible for me. It was well played by our opponent. Credit where credit is due. He deserved all the damage he got. Especially since I went in for a bad graveyard at the start because my card cycle was a little bit scuffed. It is what it is. We go for another graveyard here again because we have the Skeleton Dragons approaching. He doesn't have Fireball, so it's going to be harder for him to defend this. Especially if I can go in for arrows on top of the Goblins and get a lot of Skeletons damage, it's going to be well worth it. Then we just go in for the Goblins placement, and wow, that is a dead ghost, and potentially most of his tower gone too. I didn't expect the Phoenix to get whittled down as well. Oh, you know what? Let's go Little Prince, click the ability, and show you guys what magic is made of. Little Prince is going to knock that Royal Giant so far back. And then it's going to stop most of his attack. That's cool. It's not that cool that he raged it, though. That's obnoxious. <laughs> Sir, you are smart, and you're using the cheeky strategy that beat Muhammad Light in the World Finals. So it's fun to see cards like that when you're playing it, but not so fun when you're losing against it, right? Like, Royal Giant Evolution, when it's starting to attack faster and it constantly knocks back your cards that are supposed to kill it, it's a bad moment. All right, so we can go in for the Evo Knight here to body block. I want to go in for Skeleton Dragons again just because we bait out the Phoenix and that's four Elixir from our opponent. And then we can go in for a Freeze on the Goblins here. It's a bit more aggressive, but I want to play aggressive right now. I deserve this damage. If we can force out the Rage, then we're guaranteed most of his tower at least. Yeah, that's kind of cool. We need to be able to kill that. Okay, cool. If I didn't kill that, we would be in a really bad spot against the RG push. All right, let's go Knight in the back. We can go for a Skeleton Dragons to go encounter the Royal Ghost. And we can go in for a Little Prince up higher and then knock back his Royal Giant that way. I just want to constantly spam him with Graveyard Freezes because I know I can get away with it. So let's keep going. Graveyard Freeze. Let's go Little Prince here. Let's get the ability down because the Knight's going to be tanking. Also, going in for high Little Princes when your opponent's got Lightning is instrumental in the defense. Look at how far we were able to knock back that RG. Most people don't know that, but it has to be in perfect alignment with the Royal Giant. You drop it slightly further back and then you're vibing. Okay, wait. This is really, really scary. This is extraordinarily scary for me, but I think the Little Prince might take out its entire tower. Yeah, does he not notice that the Little Prince is on the other tower? I don't think he did. <laughs> he just played blindfolded, saw the left-hand side in danger, and didn't realize that we had a whole push in the right-hand side too. I guess the guy stayed true to his Viking nature of being fiercely aggressive, even in moments where it might hurt him. Because our Little Prince had a free lane to savagely steal the tower in the right. And winning that one puts us at 961 in the world. Hey, what's up, Ash? We're dropping a good luck here and see what's cooking. Definitely want to hit him up with the 20 win emote just to flex a little bit. Maybe get this guy scared, but I doubt it. I feel like most people at this trophy range are all going to have the 20 win emote as well. Top 1,000 in the world, people are pretty good. So we're going to go for our Little Prince in the back. He's going to go in for a bowler. Oof, okay. That's not a card that I like seeing with our Little Prince. Little Prince is about to get little value. Unless we click the ability and then to shovel the bowler so then the bowler doesn't target the Little Prince itself and targets the Guardian. Please let this work. Yo, we knocked back the bowler? Notice how that worked? Little Prince is not going to get hit for long. It's only going to get hit for the first hit, and then it's going to start slaughtering the bowler. The bad thing about this is the homely could go and click his ability, too. I don't want that to happen. He doesn't have Bar Barbaro in cycle. You know what? He's probably going to have evil archers in this deck, and I'm not excited. 
I do think that I can go for a graveyard, though, in single elixir. If he's going to go for archers, it's not going to be the worst thing in the world. Let's go in for a freeze. Oh, the one goblin on the tower. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready. That is so much damage. Even if you activate king tower, that is a delicious start for us. <laughs> we dived in deep on the tower, and the skeletons, they swam. Oh, man. That was hilarious how they swarmed the tower with all their might. So I want to go in for a knight here and then maybe go in for skeleton dragons. I'm thinking that there's a chance he's got E-Giant in this deck, so I really don't want to lose. There's also a chance he's going to have Goblin Giant. I don't know. He's going to have some sort of giant. It's going to be something. We got Bomb Tower. We can't cycle that. It was cool to be able to stop the bull originally with the Little Prince, but I don't think that's going to happen again. All right, cool. Let's just go Bomb Tower a little bit lower. Make sure Little Prince doesn't snipe it or anything. Uh, oh my gosh. That bowler was a man on a mission. I don't know if you guys noticed what was happening there, but he was totally trying to go and pull everything into the Electro Giant. And also on top of that, he was trying to go and snipe the bomb tower with the Little Prince. So there were two things that could have went horribly for me. Imagine if he sniped either of those. Oh, that would have been bad. You know what? If I arrowed on that, I think the Guardian would have locked onto the tower. So that was a big misstep on our end. Oh, does it still hit? Oh, well, it definitely would have locked onto the tower. There's no doubt about it. If he stops this knight from crossing the river, he's big brain. If he doesn't have enough elixir for that, then that's sad for him. Yeah, he's smart. I mean, this is what happens when you play against good players. They don't allow you to have a tank for the graveyard, and then you get negative value. Heals bad man. I think we just arrows here and get damage on top of the little prince. If we can kill the little prince, I'm going to be a happy sir. Nice, please. Cool. We take those. So generally, when you play against Electro Giant, you want to go for a high little prince like this. Then click the ability to knock back the Electro Giant. And then... Well, it didn't knock it back as far as possible. <laughs> we were hoping that he would get negative lightning value. So we were hoping that we isolate our little prince away from the bomb tower so he can't lightning everything at once. He'll go graveyard here because we have a lot of stuff counter pushing. Let's just freeze on the bowler and the cannon. And then Evo archers are going to be a nuisance, but not the worst thing in the world. Let's arrows here. He'll hit the bowler. All right. Is he going to dual lane pressure me though? That could be a problem. Anyway, let's little prince again. Let's just do it again. Let's run it back. Running it back. There's the lightning attack. Cool. Little Prince should end up dying. Let's go in for Skeleton Dragons here. And then just use Goblins on top of the Electric Giant. Since the Skeleton Dragons are super far away, he should have to Tornado them. I don't think he wants to do that, though. Man, this game is becoming extra spicy because he did activate the King Tower. That's the only reason that it's annoying. I can't get damage. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I really want this damage. And he's like, nope. How about uh, you try to go for a Graveyard Freeze again, Jake? That's exactly what we're going to do, bro, dude. So we're in a graveyard freeze, hit the king tower, and then arrows away on the archers. Oh, that was a terrible archers, if I do say so myself, sir. That was a lot of value for me, allowing me to go and arrow on the archers immediately. I guess I was going to arrow on them regardless of where they were dropped. If you guys don't know, arrows do do enough damage to win us this game. So I'm just going to cycle back to that and walk with a win. Go cycle our bomb tower here to stop the electro giant. And then if he cycles another one, it's fine. In fact, we will just freeze on defense and then hold everything in place while we arrow your tower down. It's at one, two, three. Oh, it was such a perfect, awesome number, and we had to ruin it. You're running Electro Giant, though, so you're not allowed to have nice things. It's fitting to leave Ash and Ashes as we fly on to the next game like a phoenix. Hey, this guy finished 122 in the world. What's up, man? So I'm going to go Skeleton Dragons, usually in double elixir, though. If he starts to spam stuff in the back or if he spams at the river, we'll counter with Skeleton Dragons. But definitely Graveyard Freeze is exponentially better the later the game gets. Since Freeze is able to hold a lot of cards in place, if there's more stuff on the map, you're going to get good trades. However, against Poison, it is way worse for us to get to the late game because he'll easily be able to afford that to counter our Graveyard. So we need to take full advantage of the situation with his Poison out of cycle for three more cards. He dropped Ice Spirit, so that's why it's three instead of four. And now he is two cards away, dropping his Knight. So I'm going to get goblins down on the field and see what we can make happen. I am going to go in for a graveyard. It is a bit aggressive, but it is well worth it. I don't think he's back to the best answer to it immediately. Yeah, he's not even going to try to. He's not going to be back to poison right now. He's going to go for ice spirit knight and cycle two sessions of knights on defense. Dang, this guy might hard counter me a lot. I want to see if I can win this. Because I think this will be the most difficult matchup imaginable for me. I'm going to get a knight down. I wish that goblin didn't hurt my tower, but it is what it is. We know he's going to be back to royal delivery, so I have no expectations for the skeleton dragons. And I think it might be better for us to go opposite lane. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, man. It's going to be a tough game for us here. If I go for goblins, they're just going to get logged. However, it is a two-for-two two trade, so not terrible for me. What do we do? If we go little prince, that'll get poison most of the time. If we went in for a graveyard and single elixir, and he didn't have poison in cycle, and he still defended minimally with only 200 damage. That's the importance of this type of matchup for him, is to defend maximum, not taking any bit of chip damage. 
Okay, interesting. I don't love that on his end. We can go and click the ability and we can kill the miner. And then we can get a graveyard counter pushing. So I do like the situation here. Would I go for our graveyard? He's probably in a poison. Let's go Skeleton Dragon's other side, maybe. If we can go for Skeleton Dragons, and then we can go in for a freeze, that would be pretty funny. Because he doesn't have Night in Cycle. This might be a strat. This might be a play. Okay, I was thinking about it. I really wanted it to work. But we did bait out our opponent's win condition, so there's that. We're going to get a Knight down to go and try to pull his Knight. And then if that Knight can counter everything, that would be hilarious. I'm going to have to get Goblins down in the middle. There's a chance he pre-logs them. Yeah, that's what happens when people are at the skill level. They know what the play is, and they're going to make every possible play to make sure you can't do it. This guy is trying to tragically tilt me. Wait, interesting poison there, bro. I don't know if I like that on your end. If I go in for this and get him to go, yep, he thought I was going to go knight. I'm not doing it. I'm going knight left-hand side. This might work out. We made a prediction on his prediction, and that was cool. I didn't expect him to do that fully. I thought he was going to go for something else, but... He did go for a front tower, so that was even more elixir than I anticipated. Let's arrows on the goblins. And we're still losing the game by quite a large margin. Maybe I can go Little Prince in the back, get a three-card cycle, and then unleash two graveyards before he's ready. There's also that possibility. Maybe we can outcycle the poison with a three-card cycle. So there is that strat. I'm going to go for the knight right now. I'm going to go in for a graveyard on the left-hand side, and we'll see if we can make it happen. Obviously going to be difficult to do, but we do get the poison out of him immediately, so there is that. Let's go Skeleton Dragons. Maybe we can go and finish off the Inferno Tower. I mean, crush the Inferno Tower, that would be a vibe. Gonna log, go Goblin's right-hand side, get another Knight down, and then go Graveyard Freeze. So, is this gonna do something? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Freeze on top of the Goblins as quickly as we can. We do end up hitting also the uh, Knight, so that's huge. Skeletons are swarming, and he's gonna go for a delivery, so it looks to me like that was the way that we need to play. If we can get the three-card cycle, maybe we can win this matchup. That's the way that we... Oh, that's literally the only way I can win. I just don't see any other possibilities. So he used his poison on offense, interestingly enough. So let's see how this goes. I would love to go in for a freeze on top of the Inferno Tower, but that's also not even a chance that I can do that. Let's go arrows on top of the delivery. I'm going to get some nice damage here. You know, we are starting to make it happen. This is good. We're clawing our way back into the game. All right, so we're going to have to go in for Knight and Goblins. I, I think he's going to go in for the Miner. So let's go for the Knight behind our tower and see what happens. All right, we're going to go Graveyard just to bait out the poison, hopefully. Let's go Goblins here in the back because he's going to drop his Miner there since the Knight was in front. Let's go for a Freeze. Ooh, this is not great, but it is something. Try to Arrows to get more damage on the tower. Not really working out, my dudes. So we have the three-card cycle like one more time. Let's see how this goes. Let's go Knight in the back. Drops his uh, poison, and then obviously we need to go in for a Freeze on top of the Goblins. I have to go Arrows again. Little Prince didn't die yet, so there is that. We're back to another Graveyard before the first Graveyard even gets finished off. You know what? go for a knight try to keep up the fight and see if we can delight on his tower here we need to get goblins on the miner potentially and go click the little prince ability go skeleton dragons afterward and we're trying to do some shenanigans because we have a lot of stuff rushing at him with the evo knight tanking there's a chance there is actually a certifiable chance that we can win this game the evo knight allowed us to get the little uh prince ability on the tower no way we actually won oh <laughs> let's go we stole the game from satan and I can't believe we destroyed a minor poison player with goblins when we're running Graveyard Freeze. The Guardian gave us a profound opportunity to beat a hard counter even when it was played by one of the best players in the world. Hey, this guy finished 31 in the world. Meow. Dang. We are playing against a massive menace right now. So I'm gonna go Skeleton Dragons in the back. Usually I don't do this and I don't split them, but because I'm playing against someone really good, I don't want to drop them in the same side. I want to see what his deck is first. So he's going to have his Little Prince and a Barbro. Looking like it's probably going to be a beatdown deck. Maybe it's going to be Graveyard. Maybe it's going to be like, I don't know, something like Golem. There's a chance it's going to be either or. Anyway, I want to go and pop my ability, drop it first before our opponent does, so then we can make sure that we lock on to his Little Prince and finish it off. He's not going to drop an ability. Interesting. You have Archers, Little Prince, and Barbro. So I'm going to Arrows on the Archer. I don't think this is going to be an amazing trade, but it's something that we can work with. Also, we know he's going to have Archer's Evolution, right? Whenever we see Archer's, they have to be evolved. I'm going to get Goblins down in the back, and he's going to Electro Giant, so that's fine. I think I can get a Knight down and then get a Bomb Tower to pull the Electro Giant. So, as long as the Knight's body blocking for the Bullet, we should be A-OK -okay here. Also, I would like to activate King Tower with our placement of Little Prince, but I don't think that's going to work out. Maybe it does. If we hit this perfectly, it could work. We're hoping that the Bowler stays locked onto the Little Prince and then does one more shot. Oh, if it did one more shot on the Little Prince that was locked on further back... Could have activated King Tower. I've had that happen before with archers before. Really fun when that works. 
All right, so we're going to go for a Graveyard Freeze. This is a bit spontaneous, but because our opponent doesn't have Barb Drone Cycle since he used it on offense, he's going to have an assortment of different ways of dealing with a Tornado, but it's going to be bad, right? If you're going for a Tornado, you're going to take a lot of damage. If you're going Archers, they're going to get arrowed. It's not necessarily a feasible counter for him to get that foolproof defense. We're going to go for the Knight a little bit further back in case he clicks the ability because I don't want the Knight to get knocked back by the Little Prince's ability. Really important to do that. I, I, I hate losing against Electro Giant players, so I'm going to be tryharding in this game. Skeleton Dragons might lock on the tower since the Little Prince is out of cycle. Yes! Skeleton Dragon locking and loading up the damage. That is what we like to see. That is a lot of value. All right, we can get a Bomb Tower here so that it can pull the Electro Giant. And then I don't want to drop a Little Prince or anything because he's probably in a Lightning, and he does. Let's get Goblins down on top of the Bowler. And then let's get an Evolved Knight down as well. So if he doesn't Tornado this Little Prince in, he can't get damage. So it's good for us. We can go in for a Graveyard, but I want to wait and have enough Elixir. I want to have enough Elixir for the Arrows or the Freeze. Generally, going in for the Freeze here is a little bit better because we can Arrows afterward and still finish off the Archers and also hit the Little Prince. We want the Knight to be alive for a lot longer. Little Prince is on the tower! Oh my gosh, the Knight is also going to get locked on the tower too! That is ginormous value. Holy. Alright, I think I can go in for Skeleton Dragons, but he might go in for an Electro Giant. So let's go for a Knight here and then Graveyard Freeze and just bypass the Electro Giant because he can't body block it at the river if there's nothing that's crossing the river. He's just going to shiver with the Freeze and fall real fast. Oh, he's not even going to try. My man dipped out of the game. He's like ranked 31 in the world and didn't even have a shot to beat this Graveyard Freeze deck. Despite having Archers and Barbro and Tornado, he got frozen to death real fast. Wow, the only damage he got was a solo Electro Shock in the right-hand side. And as you can see from his ranks, at 31 in the world and 66 in the world, at over 2,900 medals, this guy is insanely good. And he got dominated by the ice-cold defense of our deck. And that destructive victory places us at 691 in the world. Hey yo, this guy finished 24 in the world. We are only playing against good players today. I don't know what Clash Draw wants to do, but I think they want to tilt me. That's, that's what I'm assuming. I'm gonna go Knight in the back as he was cooking. We are gonna go for a Graveyard if you wanna do absolutely nothing. You are literally not cycling anything. You are letting me replenish all of my Elixir with this Knight. What are you thinking? Oh, it's a Sparky player. It makes sense now. Also, I misclicked the Graveyard. It should've been one more tile to the right. It's fine. It's all right. We're chilling. We're gonna freeze. We are chilling on a different level now. Obviously, the skeleton surrounding the mini pack is cool, but I don't love the fact that he literally unleashed three small spells. What? Barbril? Arrows? And also having Rage? Oh, I don't think we're on the same page here. Oh, let's go! <laughs> that Little Prince was placed in a precarious position, but he stayed alive. Let's click the Little Prince ability right before he's on the edge. And, oh, that would have been so cool if we were able to finish that all off. Let's Arrows here. Kill the Knight. Kill the Minions. Get some value from the Little Guardian as well. Two slices and dices on the tower. we love to see it. So, if we're able to beat Sparky, that would feel good, because... 99% of the meta is Sparky, right? You guys see this everywhere. Shrek oh, hello, and his man. Sparky friend. I, I think that that's good. We can go for our Bomb Tower early. And then we can maybe go in for a Freeze. I don't necessarily love going for the Bomb Tower early. I think I should have cycled the Knight and then used Freeze on defense. It's okay, though. We're going to find a good way to defend this. The Little Prince. He might have Lightning, honestly. But after seeing three small spells, I think it's slightly unlikely. Okay, so we're going to get our Knight down. We're also going to go for our Goblins, the Body Block, so the Knight doesn't get targeted by the Mini P.E.K.K.A. Because if the Knight dies, then we're dead. That's just how it works. Mini P.E.K.K.A. ranged up. It does monstrous damage. It will, like, three-tap the Knight, I believe. So that would have been horrible for me. Let's go and click our Little Prince ability again, see what he's up to. Forcing out more Elixir. Always going to want to arrow this, so then we can get the similar interaction that we did last time. I think the Guardian does slice and dice the tower again, hopefully. Oh, it doesn't. Huh. How did it work the first time? Was I faster with my arrows and then I got slower as the game went on? I got older, guys, and then my reflexes got worse. <laughs> Just like, you know, one minute, it was enough to age me. All right, it's fine. It's okay. It's all calculated out here. We're going to go Bomb Tower on defense. We're going to have our freeze. I wonder if the Bomb Tower pulls the Goblin Giant there. I wonder. I don't think so. I think I messed up. I think I massively met. It worked! That was one of the most miraculous things I've done in a minute. All right, let's get Goblins down on top. Make sure it misses. That's nice. And then he's not going to be able to kill the Evo Knight. Oh, it still took damage. It didn't get the shield up. That's weird. That's weird, man. Okay, cool. We can go in for a freeze. And then we can go arrows. And then we can go in for a knight. And I think we're all right. Maybe this is good. We can also click the ability to go and knock back his Goblin Giant. This is fine. It's okay. We're going to tank for the Sparky with the Guardian as well. We can get Skeleton Dragons on the field. We can go for a graveyard. Oh, we are definitely going Goblins and Graveyard Freeze. Dude, I misclicked the graveyard again. 
I'm I don't know. I, I don't know what I'm doing right now. I'm a crazy person. We are gonna go in for the graveyard. He's gonna rage it all up. Easy to hit all the skeletons when they're clumped up like that. That was terrifyingly terrible on my end. But it doesn't matter. We got this. I think I can go for a knight and then pull back his knight to make sure that we commence more aggression. Going for goblins here to force out more elixir. He's gonna go for a barbrill, but he doesn't want to go for a barbrill. He's gonna have to go arrows because he wants to damage down the skeleton dragons. Cool. Let's freeze. Finish off all the minions with the skeleton dragons locking on the tower. That should guarantee us the win. If the skeleton dragons lock onto the tower, he's just dead. GG and well played. Not much you can do there when you're playing Sparky. Hit him up with the 21 emote to assert dominance. Hey, he's got the Royal Tournament emote, so this guy finished top 100 in the world too. That emote is way more of a flex than the 21 emote. But it's refreshing knowing that you can flex the strength of Graveyard Freeze to freeze all the annoying Sparky players to death. Goblin Giant Sparky is one of the best and most popular decks in the game right now, and Graveyard Freeze gives you free wins versus it every time. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an incredible rest of your day.